All right. Hey, it's me. Okay. Um, Jason said something earlier, right? Like when we were messaging some of the agents, hey, are you coming to training today? Was there anything new that we're going to go over, right? So I just want to address that, right? Uh, um, here's the thing, guys. I, and I'm going to relate this to what Jason and I talked about the other day. Is Jason spends a lot of time training his son, right, with wrestling. And a lot of Jason's training, why his son's been advancing so well, is, is Jason just does the same thing over and over with him, right, until he masters something, right? And so one of the things that I'm realizing is that when you go to a training, guys, you're, there's very, very few times that there's going to be something like groundbreaking that you've never heard. Maybe in the beginning, if you're brand new to real estate and it's your first month or your first six months or whatever, everything's new, right? But then after a certain point, it's not new anymore. It's just repetition. It's just reminders of what you should do, right? And then sometimes you hear something, you're like, shoot, I remember I used to do that and I stopped doing it. I got to do it again, right? And that's what a lot of these trainings are about, guys. It's about reminding you of things that maybe you're not doing or maybe the market has changed and we got to start doing that thing we used to do because now that's more effective. But I would, I just want to set the expectation with, with everybody that there's going to be very, very few times that you come to training and you learn something that is like mind-blowing or groundbreaking, Right? We are not here to entertain people and keep people on their toes. That's just not what we're here for, right? In fact, like to get really, really good at something, it actually is a little bit boring, to be honest, right? Like if you want to get really good at drawing, you just got to draw every day, right? It isn't like I got to go to a class that's going to teach me how to draw. Like after so many classes, okay, you got the technique. I just need to go up there and freaking draw a thousand times. And I, by the thousandth time, I'm going to be better than the first time. Yes or no, right? And so I just want to like make sure that we all understand that. So I want to maybe even change the name of our training to more like, I don't know, skill building or like I want to call it something different, right? Um, because it is going to be repetitive. It is going to be repetitive. And even some of what I go over, some, some of you guys are going to go like, oh, yeah, I'm doing some of that already. But my question is, are you doing it at a high level? Are you mastering it? Are you doing it every single time? Like if I had to give you a score, are you getting an 80% or are you getting 100%, right? And the thing is, some of us are at a, at a 70%, we got to get you to an 80. Some of you guys are at an 80 or a 90, we got to get you to 100, right? Or to a 99. So I just want to preface that, guys, because when we're, this opportunity right here is to come and do the repetitive stuff that is going to make you a master at what you do, right? We're looking for mastery. We're not looking for new, 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 new over and over, right? This business doesn't need to be that complicated. It's master a few things and do them really, really, really well and do them better than anybody else, right? Yeah. producing teams and we're doing a lot of the things that they're doing maybe they add something or change it or deliver it a little differently but it's for me it just reinforces that we're on the right path yeah and i want you guys to also say i know rob goes to training and, and you know some of you guys go to the other trainings and i guarantee you that the successful people are just doing a handful of things at a really really high level yeah right? and i encourage you guys to do that to think of your business especially when we're looking at the pillars in our business Oh, you don't need 30 different pills. You just need, you know, you need like two or three that you're really going to go to. Yeah. I remember one of our coaches, uh, what was his name? The guy from when we were coaching with Lars, um, John to Blake. Um, I forget his name. Not, I thought his name was Dan. Was it Dan? Was it Dan as well? Was it Dan as well, I think? Yeah, I think it was Dan. It was, he was our, our coach that we coached with. But his business, uh, he's crushed it. His business was super simple. Yeah. He's like, I do realtor.com. That's the only lead source. I won't touch any other lead source. I'm just converting like at a super, super high level realtor.com. 
He's like, don't talk to me about any other lead source. Don't don't look at me. Don't put, pitch me anything like that. He's like, realtor.com. This is how much I spend. He goes, we're closing 27, 30 deals a month from realtor.com, right? And he goes, and I've been doing that for a long time because we squeeze every freaking ounce of juice out of the realtor.com leads. He goes, these leads are called like a hundred times. It's like, I'm not giving you more leads. Go call that lead again, right? And that's what he did. Realtor.com and his SOI. Those were his two lead sources. He was closing like 300 plus deals a year. And that's it, right? Some of us have like 20 lead sources and we're not doing any of them at a high level because we're not really mastering any of them, right? Um, and so if you get any takeaway from today, guys, is how can I simplify things and how can I just get that, right? Okay, so now let's go to what I really want to talk about. Um, with our buyer showing. And I'm giving you real life experience, guys. I've been going on some buyer showings. I'm taking a few Zillow Flex here and there. Um, but one thing I'm realizing, and even when I've worked with some of the other agents, is the question I start asking is, what are you taking to your buyer showing? Right. Hey, you're going to go show this property. Right. What are you taking with you? And I've seen I'm not here to call anybody out, but I've seen someone like, oh, I, I printed out the MLS sheet and it's just it's right here on my phone. I just screenshotted it and I'm going to go meet this buyer right now for the first time. Right. Or someone's like, yeah, I just um, I have the just the one sheet. Right. The one sheet that says who we are. Or someone's like, um, I just printed out the MLS. I have a paper and I'm going to go meet them. And I'm like thinking to my head, okay, this is the first time you're going to meet this buyer. It's a $1.5 or $2 million buyer. And all you have is a screenshot of the MLS on your phone. And that's what you're showing up with, right? Because I've been going on these showings and me, like I haven't been doing Zillow Flex. I've been coaching you guys, right? But I haven't been in the trenches. Now I am. And I'm thinking when I go out to this, to this meet this buyer how can i really really impress them because i got one shot to impress this buyer i got one opportunity to make a good impression to see if they want to continue to talk to me or not or go on more showings with me or and stuff like that right and how you do one thing guys is how you do everything right so we're going to dive a little deep into what you need to take with you when you go out and show property especially if it's the first showing because remember, the first showing, they do not know who you are. You're just some random person that they spoke to off of Zillow, right? Once you've met them a few times and stuff like that, I think it's a little bit different because now that rapport is built, the value is built, they're already deciding to work with you. But that initial appointment, guys, is the most crucial one. Whether it's a Zillow flex, whether it's a referral, doesn't matter where the lead came from, but the first time you meet them is when you need to make the biggest impression, right? And- what I want to say to you guys, um, like Jason and I, like we're, we would be considered like recruiters in our business, right? We recruit, we recruit agents, we build our team, stuff like that. But guess what? You guys are all recruiters too. You guys are all recruiting buyers and sellers to work with you, right? And the best and most powerful way to recruit someone to want to work with you is to show them what it's going to be like to work with you, right? And so that comes from how I show up dressed, if I show up on time what information I'm bringing there, what sort of conversation I'm having, what I'm pointing out in the showing, all those things. Because that's going to give them a glimpse of, hey, if I decide to keep working with this agent, this is what I can expect. And if they have a good, a good experience with you on that first showing, they're already in there thinking like, hey, this is someone I can see myself working with, or I see value from this person. If you just open the door and you didn't really have much there, the chances of them wanting to meet you again is gonna drop dramatically. And what we know, guys, is it's very easy to get that first showing. Zillow Flex first showing, it's right, it's that's per, that doesn't even really count as an appointment. It's basically like they want to see this house, you're the one that's gonna open the door. Yep. But what you do in that appointment is gonna dictate if it goes to the next step, right? And so we're gonna break down the home showing packet. I know I'm 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 touching on this because I want you guys to see the value of this, right? Because there's gonna be some things that you may be doing and you may not be doing. And so home showing packet, guys, this is what I'm doing right now. And remember, I'm your competition. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to print this out for all you guys, but I'm going to show you. I have I made one here, right? And so the first thing that I want to make sure that I have is going to be the folder, right? Because right off the bat, just having a folder, what does that like show the client? Versus folder versus no folder. Like if I, if they met with Jason and Jason just had like a stack of papers and then I have an actual folder that looks nice and professional, I already like elevated myself from Jason, 
right? If he's the other agent that they're talking to. So just right off the bat folder, guys. So if that means we got to invest in more folders, we're investing in more folders, right? That means you have to invest in folders out of your own pocket. You need to invest in folders, right? If that means you want to do a cool folder with your picture on it and all that, like freaking more power to you, because that's going to make you stand out even more. I would highly encourage you to do that. That brands you, right? Um, but we'll obviously have stuff from the team. So folder right off the bat, right, is what I'm taking. The second thing that must be in there. So what I do is I try to sh I try to have this. I should unblur, but for whoever's watching, give me one second. Let me change the setting. Blur. All right. Two sides to the packet, guys. One side, one side on on the left is going to be all the marketing stuff, right? The other side on the right is going to be all the stuff that pertains to the property. At least that's how I organize it, right? But basically, it kind of gives just some some intention of how I put this yeah. folder together, right? It's organized, right? Um, real quick, let me go through this and then I'll, I'll get your feedback. And then so that's first off the bat. Let me go back to sharing my screen. What I'm going to have in there, guys, is I'm going to have the PRG marketing flyer, right? This is the marketing flyer. Everybody should have one. There's two sides to it, right? Even if you just have one side, but have one of them at least, right? Why over 800 clients have chosen PRG? It's a marketing opportunity for you, and it gives you something to talk about, right? So I have that in there. I have the other side that's selling why they need to meet with me for a free consultation, right? Home buying consultation. That's the marketing flyer. What I've done is I've gone a step further and I created my own bio. So I have my own agent bio. I have this, this is a template, it's in Canva. You guys could just literally just put your picture in there, edit your name and then just chat, chat GPT a bio. That's what I did. Has a bio about me, right? I wanna separate myself because I know they're talking to other agents. So like, how do I stand out from these other agents? I have my bio and then um, what else I have on there? I printed, I actually printed out the whole buyer consultation. Why did I print out the buyer consultation? Why do you guys think? Yeah. Depending on how much time I have and depending on how much these people are willing to engage with me, I might just do the buyer consultation right then and there, or at least go through some parts of it, right? Or at least just kind of give them a quick snapshot of what the buyer consultation is about and say, hey, this is all the stuff we're gonna cover but most importantly, we're going to make sure we answer all the questions that you have, right? Because I could just give this to you, you read it, you still have a bunch of questions on your particular scenario, right? And so this is why we need to set up a buyer consultation. Or if you guys have a few minutes now, I can go through this with you right now, right? And so buyer consultation in there. That's all the marketing stuff that I'm taking besides my business card, right? But what I'm trying to tell you guys is if you're competing with me now, right? I'm out there on showings. So if I'm going out there and I got all this and you don't, I'm beating you guys. I'm just letting you know, right? Or the other agent who is doing this is beating you, right? So now I know what pops up in some people's mind. Like, well, sometimes I get the call and they want to go see the property right then and there, right? Who's in control of when they see the property? We are, not them, right? They called you. They want to see this house. So is it okay to say, if we already know you're not prepared, you're not dressed, you don't have your stuff, is it okay for you to say, hey, let me check with the seller, what are two different times that you can see the property? Is there a time today or is there a time tomorrow, right? Every single call, guys, that I have taken so far on Zillow Flex, I have set it at a time that was good for me. Even though they initially wanted to see it like within an hour, I just said, hey, you know what? These, the seller needs a 24-hour notice. What's a time tomorrow that you can see it? every single time because i have kids i'm in the middle of something they're calling me i'm cooking breakfast i'm taking the call and they want to go see it in an hour i'm like dude i'm i'm it's sunday i'm not ready to go see it right i could see it later today or tomorrow i'm in control of when i set that appointment and i think that's the biggest one of the biggest takeaways is sometimes we're just trying to be order takers right but remember they called you and it's okay for you to say hey it's a 24-hour notice for the seller hey let me see if that time works if today doesn't work is there a time tomorrow 90% of the time, guys, it'll work itself out, right? So that you can have enough time to print this stuff out to get everything ready. Because remember, first impression. So if mm -hmm. I show up unprepared, my chances of moving that client forward to want to work with me just dropped dramatically, right? It dropped dramatically. 
let me ask you really quick. And going back to when Enrique is setting that tone, he's saying it with confidence, right? That's why, I mean, that's, that's one thing that he has because we're doing this for so long, but that's something that if you don't have that over the phone, a $2 million buyer, they don't want to buy with someone that is not confident, right? So he's already in the driver's seat showing them how it's going to happen, how it's going to work. And so I really want you guys to recognize the confidence, even while he's up there, the way he's delivering it. The second thing I want to add, I don't know if he's going to get to this, but my thing like this, everything that he just showed me right now, I I, I won't be prepared. Why? Well, I'll have three of those in my freaking box. Right? Yeah, and that's, three of those, right? that's part of the next part, right? Because I know sometimes preparation is a factor. So how do I make my job easier? This is what I did. I'm going to share my, my desktop. I have a folder that I created called Buyer Packet. I open that. And it has my sheets that I use for every single one, my bio, my home showing evaluator, my buyer consultation, and my marketing flyer. I don't have to go on Canva and try to download this, try to find it. It's in a folder, guys. I All I do is go like this, select them all, and hit Control P, and hit Print. And I have a printer at home. Raise your hand if you have a printer at home. Raise your hand if you don't have a printer at home. Okay, you need to buy a printer. Spend 100 bucks, spend 200 bucks. We are making thousands of dollars here, guys. Tens of thousands, right? Tens of thousands of dollars we are making on deals and hundreds of thousands of dollars per year or more. You need to buy a printer, guys. If some of you guys are like, I have to come all the way to the office and I live in Hayward just to use the printer, you are not taking ownership of your job, guys. You can use the printer here all day. But remember, Sometimes, like, you got the opportunity, you got to move fast, right? So, exactly. That's what Enrique is saying, guys. This is kind of, I really want to drive this home in the sense of being prepared is that's, that's a must at this level, guys. To me, that, that is a must the way we dress, the way being on time, even though he's saying it. To me, I hope we're at a whole nother level. We're yeah, selling, we're selling two million dollar freaking homes right now. So being prepared, having a printer, because yeah, you can have the basics that he had on the left side of this folder, but if you need to print out what he's going to go into on the right side of this folder, you need a printer at your freaking house. That's plain and simple. You guys. need the printer at your house, guys. Sorry, ink is a lot. Ink's expensive, right? Um, but you need a printer, and or. If you're not ready to invest in a printer, I get it. Some people have, you know, aren't making money yet or they're on the rise or whatever it might be. Go print 10 copies of everything right here. Have those printed and that's, that's on here. And have a little, you know, those little folder things you could buy to keep all your papers nice and neat. Don't just have them thrown in your car, all wrinkled, right? Have a little file thing, a portable file thing that goes in your trunk and you have folders, you have buyer consoles, you have business cards in there. You have your tool belt, guys. If you're going to build a house, you can't show up without your tools. <laughs> You don't have a hammer how are you going to build the house right you need your tool belt right so have these printed out already if you, how many people have folders at home how many people have some of these prg folders at home okay that's where I'm, all my folders went good <laughs> <laughs> okay look at permission for everybody to have at least three of these on them right it's fine we'll buy more right we'll figure that out but permission for you to grab three folders if we have them and have them with you at your house i have a stack of these at my house right? Because I'm not coming all the way to the office to freaking grab a folder. It's just a waste of time, right? I have these already printed. I have them ready to go. So all I got to do is go to the next step and print out the comps and the stuff for that property. Okay. So are we clear on what the basics are guys for our presentation, right? The basics in the marketing material that we're going to bring. That's just the standard guys. That's, that's the new standard. It's not any please do it. I think going forward, this is the way PRG does it. This is the way our, look at this. We have a small team right here, but let's do it at a high level. So anything we choose to do, let's do it at a high level. This becomes the standard. Blanca. Just what Jason said about the standard. You guys are saying that because they're here, but I saw the Slack message when Jason sent it out and said, hey guys, Tim sent everybody this marketing flyer with your photo. So it's already done for you. There's it's no already made. All of these are already made for you guys, right? Our VA made one for everybody on the team. Yep. There's no other companies that are, Rob and I come from the old days. 
Nobody was doing our marketing material for us and saying, hey, Rob, hey, Rocco, we already did it for you. The flyers were black and white back then. For us, including myself, because they want us to be prepared. They want us to be professional. They want us to be that way. Yeah. And if you're not, your credibility as an agent, if you show up with nothing, you're categorized as a door owner. Yeah. There you go. That's what you want. And guess what? Door openers get paid, guys. They get paid a showing fee. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We got a couple minutes, guys. We're going to run through the rest of this. Thank you, Blanca. Um, okay. So that's all the marketing stuff on the left side, right? Now, all the stuff that's going to pertain to the property, that's part two of this, right? So what I'm taking with me, guys, is I got my home showing evaluator. Yes, I am using this. I have clients right now. This is freaking gold right here, guys. It's so simple, but it's gold. I have two clients I'm working with right now, a referral, uh, $1.6 million price point. And they're tech, they're techies, right? Very analytical, think about everything. I did this one time with them. And now they're the ones like talking to me like, hey, what do we rate that one, right? Like I just showed them like, this is how we're going to do it. I didn't even have to ask them at the end by the third property. They're like, mm, let's, let's sit here and rate it, right? And they're like going through this process with me, but it's helped us like really eliminate stuff and really get down to what they're really looking for. And now they just text me right now. Hey, we want to submit an offer on the property that we saw. Right. I showed them properties twice, three each time, three each time. Check this out. Three on one day, three on another day. On the weekend, they went and looked at a property on their own at an open house. They brought the property to me. They want me to write the offer. Right. Why did they come back to me? When well, they probably could have tried to go to the listing agent or whatever, because I've shown so much value to them from day one on the properties that weren't good for them. Right. And that goes to this next part. You need to have this home showing evaluator. And this is what I do. The first time I met them, right? Before we walk into the property, I set the stage of how the showing is going to go. I do not let them in the home until they understand how our process is going to go, right? And the way you do that is you just stand in front of the door. Hey, guys, welcome. It's great to meet you guys. Before we go in, blah, 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 right? Before we go in, I just want to quickly uh, tell you, you know, I'm going to show you this property. I'm going to want to quickly tell you how we work so that we can make this as, a, as efficient as possible. And we can make sure that we find you the right home, right? So we use what's called a home showing evaluator. This is exactly what I'm saying. And what this does is just, it's a simple way to help us eliminate the homes that really aren't going to fit your needs, right? And so what I want to understand, I know we talked on the phone, but I just want to reiterate your top five must-haves. And I already wrote them in because I already talked to them on the phone, right? Um, but I didn't talk to the wife. This time the wife was there and I said, Hey, you have anything else you want to add? She added something else. Okay. So let me just get this clear. Top five must haves is this many bedrooms, this many baths. This is the area, stuff like that. Repeat it. Said, yes. Okay. We're clear. Great. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk into the property. Now we use a score of one through seven. Why one through seven? It just makes it a lot easier, right? Seven is the unicorn. Seven means you custom built this home and it has every single thing you need because you made it yourself. It's very hard to find sevens, guys. I just want to be realistic unless you go custom build your own home. This is an older home, so it's probably not going to be a seven, but it might be a five or a six. Anything that's a five or a six, that means it meets most of your needs, and those are ones that we should consider making an offer on. If it's less than a five, let's just walk out and just go to the next one because your time is valuable. I want to make sure we're not spending time looking at homes that just don't even meet your needs, right? Is that fair? John and Mai or whatever their names are, right? That's the stage. All right, great. Let's go ahead and walk in. Here's what I prepared for you, right? I show them the packet. Okay, this is a, it goes to the next thing. Yeah. No, I, I give them something before they walk in, right? Here's what I prepared for you guys, right? I actually printed out all the information of the property. There's a, a client view. And then I have my uh, agent view, which shows me some of the confidential remarks. So as we're walking through this property, here's your copy. Go ahead and look things over. It has all the information, square footage, all the different things, description of the property. And then I have mine, which has a little bit more of the confidential agent stuff. And we'll answer any questions as we walk through the property. Sound good? Boom. Here's the sheet, right? First property, right? They go in, they got the sheet. When we went to the next one. Hey, do you have that sheet? Yeah, right here. 
here's the next, here's the sheep, right? And that's, I'm going in and now they're over here looking, they're not asking me how many square feet, right? The wife is saying, hey, how many square feet is this? And he's answering her, oh, it's 1542. Making my freaking job easier, right? And all I'm doing is I'm just walking through the property with them. I'm just pointing stuff out. Hey guys, I know you guys said you guys wanted uh, hardwood floors. What do you guys think about these hardwood floors? Is this more or less kind of your style? I'm going back to the must-haves, right? Because I wrote the must-haves. Spacious bedrooms. Hey, what do you guys think about the size of these rooms? They're pretty spacious, aren't they? Right? Or actually, guys, you know what? These rooms are pretty small. You guys said you want a spacious room. I don't know. What do you guys think about the size? So I'm in there assessing the property with them based off their must-haves. And I have all this information, right? Which leads to the next part is I've already got the comps. What happened? I've already ran the comps. So I already know what values are, right? I've got the MLS printout. And what I did is I went a step further, right? And this is what you should do is I downloaded the disclosures and I did a quick skim through the disclosures, mainly looking at the inspection reports, the seller disclosure and the termite report, right? I have them here. I'll quickly look through them. I'll look through the summary. I'll jot anything that has like a red flag. I'm not gonna list everything. There's too many things, right? but I'll put like three bullet points and I'll write it on the sheet that I have. So as I'm talking to them, hey guys, just by the way, I did a little bit of homework. This property has about $5,000 worth of uh, termite damage. I looked it over. It's actually not that much. It's mostly around the exterior and the eaves, but it's something we can negotiate with your offer, right? <laughs> hey, also the HVAC was actually just replaced in this one. You probably won't see that anywhere, but I did check the disclosures. It's a brand new HVAC system. So I'm giving them information that they don't know because I already did my homework, right? And some of you guys are thinking, well, this is a lot of stuff. It's actually not a lot of stuff when you just follow the checklist and you just read through the stuff. You're going to know more about that property than anybody else because you took the 15 minutes to prepare, right? So I got the MLS sheets. I got the comps, the evaluator, and I made my bullet points. Items that are talking points, anything that stands out on the reports, any cost for section one, the comp price range. Hey, this is what homes are selling for between this price and this price. Here's the comps right here. Offer due date, when are offers due, and anything else that stands out about the property, right? If somebody died in the property, anything like that, which you'll read that in the, in the reports. And I'm going to use all of this stuff as talking points as we're walking through the process, right? And so what I'm doing is at the end of the, at the end of the showing, I'm bringing them back to the kitchen table or I'm bringing them to the kitchen island. A lot of houses have islands, right? And usually we puddle up right there. Okay, guys, look at the property. Let's go ahead and just chat right here really quick. So based off the home showing evaluator, where would you guys say this one fits on a scale of one to seven? Remember seven is like your custom home, five, six, it meets a lot of needs. Anything below a five, it's just, it's, it's a no, right? Most of them, they gave me a five, five and a half. That was kind of what they gave me. What would make it a six for you? Six or a seven? Well, if it was a little, if it was updated or if the paint was new, okay, paint is something that's gonna cost you this much dollars to, to fix, right? That's not a, a deal killer. How about the location, all that stuff? So I'm helping them figure this thing out, right? Now, coming up on time. Um, the point I'm trying to get to guys is, remember, this is my first time ever meeting these people, right? This was a Zillow flex call and I go and meet them and I'm giving them all this information, right? So then what I'm going to do at the end of that is I'm going to try to segue into the buyer consultation. I'm going to show them some of this stuff. Hey guys, I prepared some more information for you. We do a home buyer's consultation. I'm not sure how much time you have right now. We can go into this a little bit now, or we can set a time to meet on zoom and go through the process, right? Uh, just a little quick bio about myself, guys. I prepared this for you as well for you to review but just some highlights, right, of, of what we've done and who we are, right? Also, why, you know, what you get on the buyer consultation, this is what we cover when we meet with you, right? And then this is the, some of the reasons why over 800 clients have worked with PRG, right? Some of the things that really stand out for us. Uh, any questions you have about this property, right? Or, hey, let's go take a look at the next one or what's the next step? So you guys prepared to do a buyer consultation. But that's the level, guys, to which we're doing the showings, right? The few showings that I've done, the first one, I wasn't prepared, right? My first Zillow Flex, since I got on Flex, I wasn't prepared. Huh? I winged it. I took a little bit of info, but I winged it, right? And so I quickly left that one. I thought, man, like, what could I have done better? 
And it was just, I didn't, I didn't, I prepared slightly, but I didn't have all of this stuff with me. Right. And so it, it, that appointment became really transactional to where like, do you like this home or not? And if you don't like this home, I'm not going to call you back. Right. And that's not what we're looking for because nine times out of 10, that first home that you show them, they're not going to buy that home. That's not the home they're going to buy. So you have to go into that appointment already thinking, how do I make a big enough impression on them so that they want to meet with me again? Because I already know this is like, this, this is a throwaway home basically, right? How do I use this throwaway home to point stuff out to them so that they see that I'm looking out for their best interest? Or even, even if you don't think that home's for them, you should tell them, hey guys, I know you guys wanted something you know, with spacious room. The rooms are really small here. I think maybe we should keep looking because you told me this is what you want here. And then I will let them like argue back with, oh no, we could probably make it work, right? I'll let them, but I wanna show them that like I'm selling them away from this home. And then they can start to see like, man, this guy is really trying to take care of us, right? Um, I'm gonna end right there guys, but I wanna know, Really quick, we'll take two more minutes and we're done. Any questions, guys? Any feedback? Is this something you're already doing or what stood out from you most from what I just shared that you need to add to your arsenal? Maybe that's the question. What stood out from you most that you need to add to what you're currently doing? If it's a first time home buyer, actually, we have to discuss the lending and Okay, so so already selling the lending consultation to find the purchase power. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can add, we can definitely add um, an alliance lending flyer, right? Uh, Amish said, can we put these on a shared drive? Yeah, definitely. We'll put, we can put these on the shared drive so you guys can have them all ready for you. Um, but what I'm looking at is what stands out? Yeah, I want to know like, hey, Enrique, like I'm doing some of that, but this is what I'm not doing, right? So, like, so I, I, what are you not doing from what I talked about, right? So, so. Side, but the bio. Okay. Yeah. They were like, okay, our next availability is Wednesday. We met with them yesterday and then we're doing our buyer consultation. They are turning all of their stuff in this week. Just because we did this. Yeah. Well, one thing that stands out to me, Enrique, is that if you're looking at this and you're saying, holy shit, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. We don't know who this client's going to be. We don't know if they're going to go. We don't know. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, half of this work can be done just by preparing. Right, half of the left side of the one side of his folder is already prepared with regardless of what client he meets with. Yeah. So I want you guys to really take that away. Like, okay, like, no, we can spend one hour, make five of these packets, you know, right there and you have it ready. And the other thing I want you to understand, because a lot of times when I'm talking with the agents and doing some one on one, it's like these clients have ghosted me. So you're telling me you took the call, you showed the property, but now they're not getting back. This right here is going to eliminate that. It's not, not completely, but it's going to minimize it, right? Because now they're not treating you as just opening the door for one, two, three Main Street. They're looking at you like, holy shit, I want to work with this guy He's, or this, this, this agent. They're well prepared. 
Yeah. And so I want you to understand it's like, oh, do you think it's too much work? Well, no, first off, the first part of it is half of it can be done up front. The second part is this this is going to eliminate them, the people from ghosting you, not showing up, and not answering your phone. Yep. Um, a lot of times you're going to meet with people and they're going to say, hey, thanks for showing the house. Let me get back to you. Right. Does that happen quite often? So if they don't have anything that they can go and think over because you didn't take anything, the likelihood of them getting back to you, you're just it's just relying just on the conversation. That's it. Right. And so this also is going to ensure that number one is you hit certain things, because if you do every single appointment like this, it's consistency across how you service your clients, right? If there's a checklist, hey, every client, I go over these 10 things. That's going to ensure that like, I don't, I'm not going to have to think, well, shoot that one. I only went over three things. That one, I went over five. That one, I went, I went over eight. That one, we talked more. It's like, no, how you do one thing is how you, how you do everything, right? So you guys need to set the standard for how you're going to service your clients. What sort of experience do you want them to have? How do you want them to look at you, right? Do you want them to see you as a resource or just someone that opened the door? Someone who's a resource, you're going to want to keep coming back to that resource, right? To navigate this home buying journey, right? If it's just a door opener and there wasn't a lot of value given there, they can just go click the next guy on Redfin or the next person on Zillow and open the next door, right? And so the reason clients will keep coming back to you guys is because you took the time to prepare. And some of us need to prepare to be prepared, right? Meaning like, I got to go, I have to make sure my bio is ready. I got to make sure this is all ironed out. I got to make sure it's all saved on my desktop, saved on my hard drive, wherever you, you're saving it. So that next time I do have to prepare, I'm not scrambling. I literally did this right before the meeting. It took me 15 minutes to do this. To run comps, print everything out, get the folder, 15 minutes. Because I already had like half the work done. I just hit print. And then the only other things I had to do was go research the property, right? So 15 minutes to potentially go make, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a deal. Is it worth your time, guys? Is it worth the, the energy, right? Absolutely. Um, and some of you guys that are, are newer, because this I know this was what you guys may say, like, okay, like Jason said, I have confidence because I've done this a lot of times. Some of you guys that are newer, if you just rely on this stuff and just don't deviate, it's like half the battle's already done, right? Like you don't have to go in there and make stuff up. Let's say you're not the most confident, but you hit every bullet point. Maybe you didn't deliver it like I delivered it, but as you do it more, it's going to get better and better. And a lot of stuff will just become memorization. It'll become natural. But as long as you just follow the checklist and you just talked about each thing, like half the battle is done, right? And then you make sure you like spend some time, like really just building rapport with them. You don't have to be like a really, really experienced agent to really make a valuable impact on these clients. Just follow the process, right? That's why the system has been built. And so I would encourage you to just buy into this, follow the process, do not deviate, do not cut corners. Do not cut corners if it's a SOI or a friend of the family, that's the worst thing you can do, right? Sometimes we think, oh, I'm gonna go show my cousin a home. So yeah, I'm not gonna take all this stuff. I guarantee you they know someone else is a realtor. And all it takes is like for someone else at the barbecue to like say, hey, let me go show you a home or like give them some better information. And then now they're like, yeah, I know you're my cousin, but this guy's kind of better than you, right? It's going to happen. So don't cut corners, right? Or skip stuff because it's someone you know and you think like I got this in the bag already, right? In fact, you should want to do an even better job with the people that you know because then they're going to tell more people. They're the ones that are going to be your biggest allies for referrals, right? Um, so how you do one thing, guys, should be how you do everything. That's all I got for you. Uh, if you need help with this, let me know. But going forward, guys, if you are not doing this, you are not following the protocol. It's just putting it out there right now. Yeah. Who has work to do? Raise your hand if you have work to do to prepare your packet, like to have all your stuff ready, right? One, two, three, four, five. I know you have some stuff already, right? 
six, but there's, there's pieces you have to add, right? So I would say by next week, right? By Tuesday, get those pieces done, right? Sooner than that. Well, not even that. Some of you guys are on flex and you're taking calls and you're going on showings today or tomorrow, right? So I would say before your next showing or by your next showing, take a little bit of time to prepare this because once you prepare it once, then you could just save everything on your desktop and it's ready to go for the next one, right? And so your next showing, guys, going forward needs to look like this, right? I'm going to put the checklist uh, in Slack. It's all there. Yeah. yeah, I'll put all the links, guys, in Slack. I'm going to, um, we're up on time. I'll put all the links in Slack for you guys. Um, and then hit me up if you guys need any help with it. Uh, folders are in the admin room. Just go ask Andrea. I gotta see how many we have. We might need to order some more. Now, if I don't have, if there's no more folders, Mark, what should you do? Yes, right? Did you guys hear that? If there's no more folders, right? Because I don't know how many we have left. Let's say we run out and we gotta order more. So it takes some time. Go to Office Depot, just buy a stack of black folders. That's it. Like it could be that simple. They're not that expensive, right? Buy a pack of, buy a pack of 10. I don't know. You might spend 10 bucks, but be resourceful, right? Like fig figure that part out, right? Until we get more, if we need more. I know there's some in there, but I don't know how many. All right, guys, let's clap it up. Thank you guys for showing up today.